Cool. Well, hello. Um, it's really good to be here, Sham. You've done an amazing job. It's just been so cool hanging out back, chatting with you guys, getting to hang out in the sessions as well. Um, I guess this is my story of how I've kind of road mapped. Um, and it certainly isn't something that I planned. It's something that kind of just came about and happened. But I think, you know, being able to stand at the bottom of the mountain and kind of look at what could be ahead in the mountain is definitely a great thing to do. So I'm a designer, I'm a founder, um, and currently I'm chief make lighter. And Make Light is a company that I founded with a couple of people. We turn people into pixels, so we do special effects on mobile phones at live events. So if all of you were to whip out your phone right now, you've got our app, we could turn the whole audience into a big light show or sound show, getting all your phones synchronized. But I'll talk about that in a little bit. I thought I should probably start by going right back to the beginning. So imagine this is me standing at the bottom of the mountain. And so I thought, you know, what I think is really important is as you're plotting where you're going to go, it's kind of good to understand where you're starting from and your start point. And so there's a few things, I guess, with my starting point or my background that I think massively impacted where I went and how I thought about where I went. I was born in the 80s. Being a kid in the 80s was really awesome. Any kids of the 80s here? Nice. Um, if you've seen Stranger Things, the uh, TV show, it's pretty much a documentary. That's exactly what happened. Um, riding BMXs, chasing monsters on the upside down, all of that. That happened. Um, so I don't know if you can guess which one I am in the picture. Um, and I think, you know, a massive credit to my parents for teaching us to be curious, to be creative, um, and to always work to strive for what we wanted to achieve. Um, and I loved, you know, coming into Huckletree and seeing Stay Curious on the wall. That is so important, no matter what you're doing, um, whether it's a creative business, whether it's cloud infrastructure, and, you know, kind of, or, you know, different type of business, you've got to be curious about finding those solutions. And I think this was one of my role models growing up, although I didn't know it at the time. But this is Jim. She's a rock star. Uh, but also, she's madly into technology. And so she had these amazing earrings that would create a hologram projection called Synergy, who would help her uh, fight crime and fight the dastardly misfits who are always trying to muck up things for her. So I think, you know, without really realizing, uh, this was something that I really attached onto. And so even as like a really little kid, I loved technology. I loved progressing the future. Um, all of that kind of thing. And I come from here. So this is a map of New Zealand, in case people don't know. Um, it's quite far away from here. Um, and I think massively where I came from, the country that I came from, really did impact how I thought about the world um, and what I wanted to achieve. So I was hanging out with people like this growing up, <laughs> basically. So I guess my point is, I think it's really important to know where you come from and, and who you are, because without realizing where we've grown up, the family we grew up in, is gonna impact the way we see the world. Um, and that could be really positive, but there could also be some things that we struggle against just because of some of those kind of mindsets. And so when I was growing up, so one thing about New Zealand, um, which I love, it's an incredible country, if you haven't been there, go. Um, but we have this thing called the tall poppy syndrome. And what it means is anyone who tries to kind of push ahead and succeed and do things differently to everybody else gets pulled back a little bit or knocked off. And so when I was growing up, I often heard words like this about me. So who's ever been called things like this? Put your hand up right now. Hopefully all of you have your hands up. I think the best one for girls that is we just got to stop is bossy because that's specifically gen that's gender specific and it's just totally irrelevant. So I guess for me, I had to change that narrative. If I was gonna climb a mountain anywhere, I had to change thinking about these words as defining me and change them into a bunch of other words. And so I think that's really important. You know, you've got your starting point at the bottom of the mountain. Um, and I think this talks really to CEO psychology. And there's a great book called The Hard Thing About Hard Things. 
Um, and it's by an amazing guy called Ben Horowitz, who's a VC in the Valley. But the book is incredible because it outlines his crazy roadmap of how he got from his early beginnings to incredible success. But boy, when you watch that, it, when you read it, it's just some serious war stories. And he talks a lot about founder or CEO psychology and how, especially a lot of people who push outside of, um, you know, we're, we're driven, we're often quite able, quite ambitious, maybe we did quite good at school. Suddenly, you're the CEO of this company and you're used to getting like 100 out of 100 on a test and you're getting like 20 or 10 out of 100. And that's really tough to fight against. And so you've got to capture that your own psychology um, in order to not constantly feel that kind of fatigue of failing, of, of not, not um, adding up, not achieving. So anyway, without any kind of particular plan, I just did it. Um, I was pretty compelled to form, uh, found my own company. I went to art school, I didn't do business school, I didn't do computer science, um, wanted to do design. And so I worked as a designer for a number of years in a music company, then switched into a strategic brand agency, and then thought, I want to do this for myself. So in 2008, I founded a company called We Love Inc. The driver was it was things that we love to do. That was what we wanted to create. Um, and we wanted to make things that our clients loved as well. There was a lot of real heart and real passion about what we were creating. Uh, I actually founded it the day that Lehman Brothers collapsed. I didn't actually know what Lehman Brothers were at the time. Uh, that was the beginning of the global financial crisis. So I was building business in a time where financially the world was all over the show. And so immediately we started getting clients because of some of the previous work that we had done. Uh, we started winning awards for the type of work that we've done. Our focus was really about interactivity, about inclusive design, about people at the heart of it. Um, and I just love all the design work that this company created. But one of the cool things about being the boss is that you get to do what you want to do. And so again, like, you know, back from when I was a kid, I was really in love with technology and future stuff. And so this is a still from a project that we did, which was an immersive space with interactive umbrellas. So you could walk around in this space and you could send a text message and these letters would rain down upon you while you're carrying this umbrella. And so this is an example of the kind of vision or the kind of things that I wanted to do. So I wanted to build new things that people would love. And so through this process of getting into technology, uh, a conversation with a client of the agency led uh, the client and myself to come up with this idea for Makelight. So it was a creative proposition. It was looking at uh, what could a musician potentially get their audience to do as part of a live show that's fun and exciting but uses the mobile phone. But before I get to that, so We, Lo we Love Inc. I founded in Auckland. Um, but within about sort of 12 months of founding We Love Inc, uh, I, we started building a client base in London. So I pretty much had to move my life into a suitcase and start commuting between Auckland and London. So that was a big commute. In fact, I think it's the biggest that you can do on this planet until we get to Mars, and then I'll probably try to do that as well. So I was doing that because it was so important for me to be there to build both sides of the business and see the London side of the business develop. And so I was growing business and network in both locations, um, which was really important. And it was through that business development that I was able to network and meet the people who were going to help me with the Make Light founding. So MacLight we founded in 2012. Like I said, it's a special effects platform on mobile phones. We raised money here in the UK for it. Uh, we built all the product out of the UK, but we now export it internationally. And so I still have the agency. Uh, the, still the headquarters is in New Zealand. We still have clients around the world. I have other people who are managing that for me. But I really was able to follow my passion and my vision into another company while retaining Kind of, kind of, I sort of see it as building on top of rather than switching out one for the other. And we've really achieved scale with Makelight. So this was a project we did in Berlin that was seen online by hundreds of thousands of people. This is a project that we, saw, that we did with Channel 4, um, which was seen by millions of people. And then this year we did a project in New York with Macy's. So I think I've run out of time to show you a video, but you can all look on the website, which is makelight.co, if you want to see... It. But I'll leave you with this because I think this was a bunch of things that along that road of getting up the mountain could have stopped me. And some of them are really well-meaning. So it might be friends who are like, what? Are you, what? <laughs> Why would you not be full-time employed? It could be parents who don't have that entrepreneurial background so they don't understand it. 
Um, for me, it was government. I had to get visas and all sorts of things to even stay here. Um, so yeah, basically don't give up and don't stop.